Okay, great. Alright. Uh, so utilities, again, uh, your red is your new sewer lines. We had to relocate this one because we got a line running right through all of our buildings. It makes sense to put it along the roadway here. Uh, everything drains to this point right here on that sewer line and this sewer drains this way. So again, the darker green is the ones that we are removing. The reds are the relocates. Uh, visiting with C uh, uh, Central Arkansas Water, uh, we looked at all the water pressures. The water pressures are good on each of the sites. I will say that Site 2 and Site 3 have access to 12-inch water lines, which gives you a little bit more flow. And site 1 is an 8-inch water line. Again, some things that will just be in our report. Okay. Uh, one other common denominator, uh, one of the big possible costs were uh, availability of capacity of electric, uh, gas, everything has the capacity there. Uh, when we visited, we had a long meeting with Entergy, and uh, they don't have to upgrade any of their substations. Uh, their circuitry is all there. So there's relocation costs, but not the great big new substation upgrade. Everything is three phase? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. All right, so last site, area three, um, 40.8 acres. Um, let's see, one thing that we changed on this one is we did go ahead and show the property coming all the way over to Jonesboro, and we showed the access out here to 12th Street, uh, if you remember the last meeting. Uh, this study area actually encompassed an area that came way out to here, and. Uh, because of uh, various reasons that we talked about at the last meeting that we moved it to this side. Jerry, is that <coughs> over on the left of the top? Is that the library? Here's the children's library right okay. here. So this site would be adjacent to the children's library. That piece right there is actually included in the children's library parcel. Okay. All right, so again, once we get to our concept plans, we look at phase one. Phase one would have your loop street back out here to 12th Street, whereas the future phase would be the rest of it out here. Here's your building number one, again, directly adjacent to across the street from the Children's Library. So we started looking at the grading on this one. Uh, this particular one had a clearing area of about 36 acres. Um, total cubic yardage of grading was 139,000 cubic yards. Uh, again, we balanced the sites, so we're not looking at removing dirt or hauling dirt into these sites. When we talk about removing material, we're talking about buildings, and concrete, and street, and, and driveways, and things like that. So, and those are in our costs. Okay. Uh, again, you can see where the cuts and fields are at. If, if for instance, we talked about possibly phasing this. If you took the cut material here, plopped it into here, uh, there's your phase one right there. It would not necessarily have to do all in of the beginning. in the beginning. Now, we've priced it out that way. Does it have to be done that way? Absolutely not. Uh, you could just do this area here and leave this untouched to a point where it's ready to be developed. So, so you is this a is this a, a recommendation that you start? back on this corner? Yes, my recommendation is to start right here in this corner. Okay. I want to ask you a question about that, Jerry, from the, and obviously it would be a decision of the authority board, but wherever this thing goes, there will likely be people around it. That's correct. Whether it's one of these three sites or, or something else. Or something else. Mm -hmm. And I think that this option um, gives, gives an opportunity to do something for the community as all of them will. But I think this one is just an absolute obvious, what if on that front side, instead of doing the, the, the first phase in that bottom left corner as you're talking about, you go down the, the street and do it back up here somewhere and build a uh, obviously temporary 10 year, what have you, um, children's park. Or, you know, would, sure. would, would that, would that take your numbers and skew them significantly? Not necessarily, because my numbers have looked at grading that whole thing at one time, so you could okay, actually so you're, do something. Okay, so you're doing everything at once per the numbers that we'll see. That's okay. correct. 
Yeah, but what he said in the beginning was that you don't have to do it that way. Right. But that he's giving you numbers because clearly it is cheaper to do it that way. There's yeah. no question about that. Right. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Okay, utilities on this one. Uh, again, just a bunch of lines and stuff on a piece of paper, but uh, we laid it out to uh, where we could uh, service each site and relocate the water and sewers as needed. Uh, these points here, and you can't see them on this view, but we'll, we'll have it in our, our final drawing. Those are basically your water pressures and things like that. This one does have 12 inch water line that we'll connect to, so we get a little bit more flow. All right. So cost comparison, again, at the end of the day, I thought we were going one direction with one side, and then all of a sudden the other side uh, was more expensive when it came to utilities. If we look at the clearing and demolition um, uh, area, area three, and the reason why that's a little bit higher is because uh, uh, we got more houses to take out. This area here had a little bit more dark work. Um, oh, again, I'm sorry. This area had a little bit more dark work. This one had... Uh, um, more, more demo work. Uh, again, just kind of going down the list, all the way down to the bottom. Um, there's not a whole lot of uh, difference in all these. So when you start looking at different ones, um, before we got all the utilities in here, uh, area one was the most expensive. Uh, when it ended up area two being the most expensive. But when you look at cost differences of that close, Closest, it's, it's, it's tough to really say the same. one one outweighs the other. <laughs> your estimate's not not as good as your numbers. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, what we tried to do was we looked at each of these sites and tried to engineer it to where it's the most economical way to do it. Yeah. Um, and, and there's some things that we adjusted and, and made work to where we could reduce the costs. When you reduce costs, like for instance, Area 1, uh, doesn't have as many houses and stuff to take out. Area 3 has more. Area 1 is steeper, has a little bit more grading to do than Area 2 and 3. Uh, area, area, two, uh, area 2 spike on the, uh, on the utilities looks like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, what, and the reason is that is because it's got a lot of relocates in it. Yeah. Okay. Area 2 has got more relocates in it. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at perimeter fencing and landscaping, that's just, you know, the perimeter of it. You got a million bucks worth of contingencies in it? Or thereabouts? <laughs> um, yeah, I got 15% uh, contingencies. And when I say dirt work, it's, it's, it's site prep, so. What did you uh, estimate in terms of a perimeter fence? What I did was I took a, um, a wrought iron fence uh, with brick columns every 50 feet. Okay. And then I add a little bit more in there for some landscaping. And that's how I came up with those numbers. Okay. So Thank it looks you. like to me that the that the, num the numbers vary out, at least right now, that, <clears throat> that it's uh, yeah, if you're looking at just dollars forward. and cents. Yeah. I mean, there, it's, it's, a, it's a coin toss as, as far yeah. as where we come out dollars and cents. The that's question right. comes, now, uh, which, which of these locations is best suited? That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, if it, if it, there's different ways you can look at it. You know, Area 1, uh, you got a lot of amenities with uh, Coleman Creek. Uh, area 3 is uh, closest to everything. It's got great visibility from 630. Um, you know, it could be an asset to, uh, to, to get more people down on 12th Street and, and help the 12th Street corridor study. So those are, getting, those are some things that, that this board will need to weigh out. But, uh, again, the costs are what they are. And, uh, That's amazing. That's pretty close. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's go through a few planning slides. These are just some maps and things that we'll include with our report, along with some, um, um, some some things that are going on. This is the university district plan. Um, this is area one, right here. Um, and again, institutional. Actually, in their district plan, this is showing up as a multi-family type district, even though this is where the Children's Methodist Center is, and residential around it. I think the thing that I would take from these particular maps is if this does become institutional, it, 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 comes, it, it basically overlaps ULR, and uh, you'd end up having residential on two sides of it. 
Uh, future land use plan. This is the current future land use plan for the city of Little Rock on how they see Little Rock developed in the future. So uh, again, they've got this designated institutional, residential, residential on two sides of it. Uh, existing zoning map. Looks like they've got ULR uh, zone right now, residential, but typically those are that <coughs> overlay with the conditional use. This is just the uh, uh, tax maps, how, how uh, parcels are uh, taxed. Uh, again, the yellow being residential, uh, this area being exempt. So that's area one. Area two and three. The trust Street corridor study, uh, that's what this, what you see here. Uh, yellow being your residential, multifamily. This is commercial. Uh, again, I think the best use of these maps are just to see, okay, this does go institutional, which would be similar to that. What are your surrounding properties like? In area three, you've only got one side of you being residential, whereas area two had two sides of you. Um, here's area two. Uh, again, if this went institutional, how does that affect the surrounding plan? <clears throat> here's a future land use plan. Here's a site right here for area three and area two. Existing zoning. Uh, these are somewhat showing up as a multi-family, even though they're really single-family units. Um, office space here, and again, how this relates to your surrounding area. That one and this one. If we're looking at a purely planning standpoint on how you zone and 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 these particular plans, and then every one of these sites would end up having to change. Uh, your zoning and your land use plan, but area three is the only one that only has one side of you that would be adjacent to a residential neighborhood. The rest of them will have at least two to three sides. Uh, again, existing use assessment map. Okay, so we'll provide all this information in the final report. Um, our plan is to do all this and then have it to you um, a week from Friday. Fantastic. So, very well done. Excellent. If you guys got any questions, I forgot to mention Julie Luther is one of our planners in our office. Um, if you got any questions on some of those planning maps and things, she's the person that asks. <laughs> okay. Any any questions or comments from the board? <laughs> I think it's surprising that they're all three basically the same in terms of. I, I it was. Not have predicted that. I, I didn't either. When I first uh, started looking at it, I thought site one was definitely going to be the most uh, cost uh, because it just seemed like it was. I remember. I think you remember my first meeting with this is a steeper site. Right. There's more. You know, it's going to be tougher to get this done, and that wasn't necessarily the case. When we started looking at relocations and utilities. Uh, demolition of buildings and things like that so and to, and to seek the information that uh, mr. Johnson asked for on the the housing side is that information with the available from the assessor that was tax assessor right which, which you're talking about the assessment in terms of single-family uh, rental, owner occupied, I don't think the tax abandoned, assessment. or what have you. The, assess the tax assessment information will tell you if, if the property is, is vacant or not. Um, That's right. But in terms of owner occupied or rental, I don't think that information is going to be available to the tax maps. Now, on that, on that zoning map that shows the okay. family, okay. I think those are homes that have become duplexes. Okay. That information is information that we will indeed get because 
with all of the discussion about displacement of individuals, that really is, is, is absolutely vital information. Exactly. We will get it. Take it with a grain of salt. It, it'll, have to, it, it'll have to be field verified. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's how it's being assessed for tax purposes. Well, you may end up having to do it block by block. I don't know. Okay. Uh, any other questions from the board? Jerry, very good report. We look forward to getting the, you bet. the final results here. Okay. But I, like I say, I'm like uh, Jay, I'm very surprised that they came out to be this. Yeah. For all practical yeah, purposes. That, 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 that make those decisions easier if no, one was you have one not, you have not helped us like that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> not, not with your numbers, anyway. <laughs> okay. Any other comments or questions from the board? about any of our I items. If not, we're going to move to the public period. Sure. And we have um, Fix that soon. Sure. we have a presentation from um, the um, uh, group from UMS and uh, I believe the other participants from the Clinton School. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. Okay. And I think, let me enter, I, I have their names here. I'll leave that for you. Um, I believe that, uh, 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 let's see, Dr. Kreshnell Nash is from UAMS. Yes. And uh, Ashley Bachelder is from the Clinton School. Right? And UMS. And UMS. Okay, fair enough. So we turn it over to you. Thank you very much. Well, the chair lies back there, too. Yes. Well, we're going to Okay, great. Um, first, let me begin by saying thank you um, to Dr. Good and the Technology um, Park Authority for giving us this time um, to share with you this afternoon. We're going to come from a different perspective. This was very interesting and educational to me, uh, but we're going to come from the community aspect. We're going to talk to you about community, a service learning project. Again, my name is Dr. Corshell Nash, and I'm an assistant professor in the College of uh, Public Health and the College of Medicine, and Ashley Batchelder, who is a Bachelor of Public Health and Public Service student. And she was a part of a course uh, that I'm a co-director of, uh, a service learning course, and we want to talk to you about this project. So my purpose, really, in a nutshell, is to talk with you about the context of what this project was, to show you the voice so you can hear the voices that we talk to and really to encourage further assessment. And we've already talked about that some, but with this incredibly detailed information, there's a piece missing. There's a community voice that's missing and we want to encourage assessment. So just very briefly, again, this was a master's course where our students really did two things. They learned about neighborhoods and health, and they also provided a service, a service to our community. And this project was looking at the effect of displacement on the health of the community. Now, they did this in a number of ways. Um, data, literature review, existing data, and most importantly, community interviews. So with that, that's my context, and I want to pitch to Ashley to talk about what she and her colleague in our course found. Thank you, Dr. Nash. Um, so I'm going to cover all the, the steps that we did in our project, and I'm going to start by telling you what we found in our literature review, which is one of the first things that we did. And when we went to do this research, we had two different things that we were looking at. We wanted to see what the effect of displacement is on health, and we also wanted to see how community engagement tends to be handled in, the, in these research parks. And briefly, um, we found that displacement can and often does cause negative impacts both in the short term and immediate and also in longer term. Short term effects are usually mental health, um, stress, anxiety, that unknown that we, we talked a little bit about today. Longer term effects tend to be about your social health, about your co social cohesion, connectedness, having people that you can rely on, how that really influences your health, and of course financial impacts throughout the whole process. And financial income status is very directly correlated to health. And we have a, um, a handout that gives a one page summary of this information more in depth that I'm gonna give here, um, encourage the board to review in full. 
And in our second question that we were looking at for what kind of community engagement is done in these research parks, we didn't find a whole lot, and that was because we saw this pattern where parks are not usually built in residential areas in what we found. So I decided to, to dig a little deeper in one of the specific sites that we've heard a lot about in the, the biotechnology park in Richmond, Virginia. And I found a few key differences that I just wanted to highlight because we often hear that this is a model that we can learn a lot from, that we have similar similar sized cities, sized parks, etc. But I found a few differences. First, that the land that the park was built on was largely underutilized. It was mainly surface parking that was state and city owned. There were very few standing buildings and actually only three residential homes. And the domain was never used because of those reasons. And the, build, um, the building and the land acquisition was done in phases instead of just um, clearing everything at the beginning. The master plan included everything, but the, the process was gradual in how they acquired that land. So we feel like those are some key differences and we need to understand our community because our impact is going to be different because you can see that we're different from the start. So we moved into trying to understand our community here and we started by looking at some census data and this is um, information from the block level, so as far down as you can get. And I just wanted to highlight a couple things. You'll see it's majority minority neighborhoods. About 25% um, are youth and children in each of the three sites, and low to mid um, income levels, and that's from the census. We also looked at the housing occupancy of owner and renter occupied, which we, we had a few questions about already. And these are the rates that we came up with based on the Pulaski County Assessor's Office. And we also have three maps that I want to point to attention here, because these maps show the distribution of where those renters and owners are. You see that they're pretty integrated throughout, so it's not all renters on one side and all owners on one side. It's pretty integrated. The dark yellow is the renter, and the, the lighter colored yellow is the owner. So we can you can look at those afterwards when we get there. But the bulk of what we did was doing in-depth interviews with a random selection of residents from the three areas. We did a random systematic sample based on a mapping activity that we did early in the semester where we as a class walked around each neighborhood, which is where um, we got our random sample from. And we asked questions in really three different domains. We wanted to know what the neighborhoods was, were like. What was it like living there? We wanted to know what people knew about the technology park, and then we wanted to see what the health impact would be, remembering why we were doing this in the first place. So we'll move to the next slide, and I'm just gonna spend the rest of the time talking about some of the things that we heard in these interviews. When we asked about the neighborhoods, people had a lot of pride that they talked about where they lived. They, they were connected to their neighbors, the central location was convenient, they had a lot of things that they needed, um, and some concerns did come up about crime, but it wasn't described in a threatening way. And a lot of people said it's the same as any city that you have, that it's not, it doesn't make people feel unsafe. We have a number of quotes, and we're, for time, time purposes, we're not gonna read them all, but we will highlight a couple on some of the slides here. There are a lot of positive things going on in the neighborhood. We do neighborhood yard sales. We have cleanup day. We do things to help the community. There was a cancer day, and we all rallied to help her get some repairs done to her home. When we asked people about the research park, we found that there was a general feeling of mistrust in the community. Some people didn't even know what we, we were asking about. People were very poorly informed. And the people who did know about the research park, they weren't in opposition to the building of it, to the concept of it. They were just not feeling a lot of trust in the process or the locations. Legally, they are using their power, their position, and power to their advantage, not considering the community and residents. They're bending the law to benefit them. They're not being truthful. Stop lying, stealing, and taking. When we moved into asking questions about what impact moving would have on these people's lives, we heard a lot of things about financial concerns, of course, fair market value, um, and if that would allow people to maintain their quality of life. But we also heard beyond that. We heard about concerns of implications on your employment, if you have a home-based business, or if you're gonna have to travel further to get to your job. 
So it was beyond just compensation for your home. Homelessness is an issue for me. Homelessness is always a paycheck away in a low paying job. The next one. When we asked about the health impact, we heard a lot of stress and anxiety already. People are very nervous and they're worried. They're concerned about what's happening. People are worried about having decreased access to their health services, to their health care providers if they had to move. And that these, these concerns were going to be especially important for the elderly community, which may not be able to adapt as easily. People are going to be so worried they're going to need reassurance. Elderly people don't adapt well to change. And it'll fall on me. And that's a secondary ripple effect with the elderly. You're affecting the family members. Next slide. <laughs> we also heard some beliefs about the three sites were, that were being considered. We heard a lot of beliefs that they were being targeted as disinvestment in low income or minority neighborhoods. Regardless of what you say, if they want it, they're going to get it. They're going to take it always. They, those people in power. Anything we get, they come and take it. Look how they, they got all them folks off 9th and 8th Street. There used to be a lot of black people downtown. Them white folks got all them blacks out from there, took the, them homes and fixed them up, and they stay in them now. We ended all of our interviews by asking an open-ended question that, would you like to send a message to the authority board, and what would that message be? We heard a lot of things. Um, some of the most frequent things that came up were the desire to keep homes and neighborhoods intact, to select an alternative location, to be transparent in this process, and to be more engaging in the communities, to ask people what they need, what they were thinking, to explain how this is going to benefit them. Um, and we'll read those. Find another area where you're not going to affect so many people's lives by taking their homes. And I mean homes, not houses, homes. <coughs> we are the United States of America. Where is the United Act? This is supposed to be a democratic society, and we don't have a say. And we had several quotes that we had to pick from, and, and at, the, at the table outside was another handout that we have with additional quotes that is available mm -hmm. for anybody who's interested. So let me sum up very uh, quickly for us here. You've heard our views, our views from the secondary data, and we can answer questions about that from our interview. Um, let me say that what this is not is a formal study. This is not meant to convey the formal position of UMS on the, on the research park and its development, but let me tell you what it does do. This experience for us as faculty and as students and community has been a wonderful process, excuse me, working together and engaging in this, this work. And it's great for our nine students in this class, but more importantly, it really provides an example of the types of information that needs to be added to the incredibly detailed engineering assessment that we heard. We have to remember to ask the question, what is the effect on the people in the community? We have to en engage the community in the process and inform the decisions about the development of the research park overall. Next slide, please. And in conclusion, I have to um, sincerely thank uh, the community members. If any of you are here who interviewed with us, we sincerely thank you for your time and sharing of your stories with us, our community partners, the University District Partnership, and I do believe some additional students are here that worked throughout the semester with us, and I would like to thank them also. With that, I will conclude. Have questions for the we have some questions from the board. Have a comment? Yes, ma'am. Please. Doc, uh, what was, what was your sample size again? Yes. Our sample size was a, a 15 interviews. It was randomly, uh, randomly, selected. randomly selected in each of the three areas. I guess along the way, is it fair to say that you didn't bump into anyone who supported selling their home or selling their property or that, was a, that, that happened to be across the board in support of what was going on? Um, we heard, there, the, the community has multiple voices. 
So we heard people's comments of wanting to keep their home, but some people said if I could sell for the right price, I would. But so not everybody was not everybody was totally negative. Not everybody, yet, was, not everybody was totally positive. It was it was there, there were there were those who said that if if I could get uh, a, a decent price for my home, if then I, I would not be objectionable to... There were, there were those, but the overlying sentiment was, we want to keep our name, we want to keep our home, we want to keep our neighborhood. But if this happens, there was that sentiment, if, you, if we get fair, we had concerns about fair market value, what does that mean? We had comments and you read quotes about, well, you know, I don't think I'm going to be able to get the same quality of home in a different area with what I'm going to potentially get. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the board? I, I would, I do, I do have a problem uh, knowing something about statistics. Uh, yes. That's a very, very small sample right. from which to draw conclusions. This was not a full. Uh, study. This was a qualitative yeah. assessment that we felt was not a part of the process. So I agree okay. with you. I mean, we, we we were as rigorous as we possibly could be with the resources that we had, which was nine students and, and right. two months of the semester. So we feel that this is still valuable information, but more assessment definitely needs to be done. No, I don't disagree that it's not valuable information. I'm just saying that with a, uh, a statistical number of that size, it's uh, not something that you would want to go to the bank with. Right. This is not a randomized controlled trial that was powered to make Precisely. recommendations. Okay. I just, I just want to say thank you. I do. Uh, that I appreciate. You know, the fact that we have young folks and I'm, I'm not going to say all students are young folks because we have older, <laughs> older students as well. But the fact that we have uh, students that are interested in the growth of their community, they're interested in, in what their economy and their opportunity, uh, not only for those folks that are in this area, whatever that area may end up being, but the community at large, uh, you guys getting involved in, in, in walking streets. I mean, there are lots of young folks that... It's hard to get them off that PlayStation. It's hard to get them off of that computer. Right. And the fact that you guys went to this effort, uh, I, I, I applaud you I and we appreciate it because obviously we have leaders of the future coming behind us. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. Before, before I ask the next public one, I need to ask Jerry one question. Uh, which I meant to ask and didn't as we were passing over. But much of the um, uh, uh, evaluation and uh, site discussion and so on, much of that we can carry over to other sites and utilize some of the background information that you all have gathered, right? I know that not the detailed information, not the detailed in engineering information, but some of the issues with respect to sizing and placing and that sort of thing. Sure, sure. Should I actually think, uh, absolutely, I think it would be very important that if you're trying to do a comprehensive or an evaluation of some type, right. I don't know that you could go into this much detail. It takes a lot of time and effort right. and, and funds to, to go into this much detail. But as you look at possible future sites, Yes, you know, the same number of, of square footage, right. parking, things sure. like that needs to be incorporated as you evaluate. So we can evaluate that Absolutely. using the data that you have. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much. I meant to ask that earlier and I just forgot.